When I first got the WWE Network, I could not believe just how great it was having so much wrestling right at my fingertips. But with as good as it is and with as much as it offers, there are still some fascinating moments that you might have to search outside of your network to find. And as some of you may remember from my great wrestling debate that I had with Brian Zane from Wrestling With Regret, that I do believe that a well-rounded fan should be willing to look beyond just what the WWE gives them. But where to start? Well, that's the topic of this episode. Because today, Dave knows seven matches you won't find on the WWE Network, but you should totally watch anyway. Now first I would just like to say that there are tons of great matches that are not available through your WWE Network subscription, and there's no way that I could ever cover all of them in just one video. So just think of this as a grab bag of 7 matches that I think wrestling fans should see and judge for themselves in order to have a well-rounded experience. I'm not saying that there aren't better matches out there, so don't go screaming in the comments section that I forgot this match or that I forgot that match, because this is just a small random sampling with no particular order. Also, with that being said, I'm not even necessarily saying that these matches are all great, or even good for that matter, or that you'll like all of these matches. In fact, while I hope that you like as many of them as possible, there is a good chance that you probably won't like them all. These matches are just different from the usual WWE fare, or they've managed to be a point of contention among certain fans, or they might just give you a different perspective than you had before you watched them. This list is a series of matches that, for better or worse, are the kind that I think, in order to have a balanced opinion on wrestling as a whole, you should probably check out for yourself. And lastly, before I get into the list, and to the best of my knowledge, and as of the time of this recording, while these matches are not on the WWE Network, they're not exactly hard to find either if you are so inclined to watch them. So with that out the way, let's just get started. Will Ospreay vs Ricochet These two have gone at it quite a few times, but their showdown in the New Japan Best of the Super Juniors in 2016 might be their most famous bout. Now the thing about these two wrestlers is, some just love watching them square off while others detest it. Fans of theirs will note their sheer athleticism and marvel at their feats of acrobatics. The Tractors, on the other hand, will scoff at the match, viewing it as a mere spot fest and not a believable simulation of combat. Are there too many flips and dives and jumps for this match be taken seriously, or is this just an amazing spectacle of high-flying action evolved to another level? You be the judge. The Colony versus The Young Bucks if you've never experienced Chikara, then you might not know that there is a whole other side to wrestling. Chikara is more meant for a younger demographic and has no problem with wrestling being silly or funny or even cartoony. And there's no better example of this for me than The Colony. A wrestling faction of ants, yes, that's right, ants, The Colony took on the Young Bucks, who are pretty controversial by themselves, at the Chikara event known as High Noon in 2011. And while there may be other examples of what Chikara is all about, and this is certainly not the most outrageous match that Chikara has ever put on, I think it works as a palatable experience to showcase the talent and the flavor of the company, but not so much that it overwhelms anybody who would be scared off by it. Furthermore, while both parties have received a fair amount of criticism throughout their careers, I think there is a real solid amount of wrestling that anyone could appreciate in this match between brothers Nick and Matt Jackson versus Fire Ant and Soldier Ant. Kenny Omega vs Haruka, aka Nine Year Old Girl. This is probably going to be the most controversial match on this list, but I do think it's worth the watch. First, yes, if you've never heard of this match before, I did say 9 year old girl. And no, that's not merely a gimmick. Kenny Omega, the man that some claim is the greatest wrestler in the world right now, did indeed have a match against a female child. Now obviously, there have been those who defame not only this match for ever existing, but also Kenny himself for ever doing it. There are those who claim that Kenny made a fool out of himself, and he also exposed the business by having a match with a small child. Mm, so why do I think you should watch this match? Well first it's only about 5 minutes long, and something as unique as all this does deserve a watch. Even if you still think it's dumb, I bet you'd be hard pressed to say that it's not at least captivating for what it is. Secondly, wrestlers do embarrassing things in their careers all the time. They just just take work wherever they could find it. I mean, do you think the Shockmaster wanted to wear a glitter-covered Stormtrooper helmet and fall through a wall? If anything, you should just blame the Booker. Thirdly, this little girl is actually very talented, and it was just nice to see that she got a chance to showcase her ability. And finally, while a lot of indie matches get criticized for no selling, this is a match that gets slammed for selling things that should not be sold. However, this is very different from Omega's match against the Blow-Up Doll. Yes, that did happen too. That was an inanimate object that he was selling for. This was at least a human being, and was he really selling for her? 
You could make the argument that he was never in pain at any point from any of her onslaught and that she was just using momentum to move him around the ring. So is he selling too much or did he do as good of a job as he possibly could under the circumstances? Johnny Gargano vs. Candice LeRae Smash Super Showdown 3 2015 Surprisingly, continuing with another man against a female match, we have Johnny Gargano vs. Candice LeRae. Now these two are married in real life and I do not condone real life domestic violence. However, However, I think this match is something totally different. For anyone who is appalled at the idea of men and women wrestling in a predetermined professional wrestling environment, this match may change your mind. Both parties are consenting to this, and yes, they do a great job of working together. Again, I would like to remind everyone that wrestling is fake. And one of the things I respect the most about Kansas is that she doesn't want anyone taking it easy on her or to be handed anything. She truly wants to earn everything that she gets. For me, this match proves what women can do, even if it makes some men cringe. And while these two have wrestled each other on more than one occasion and have always done a good job, I think this match in particular is a great example of both storytelling and and wrestling ability. Mark Rocco vs. Marty Jones, March 1987. I've mentioned this feud before, and both of these men have had classic bouts in their long-standing rivalry, but this match really stands out because I think, more so than any other match that they've ever had, it could easily be right at home on today's indie scene. Heavy chain wrestling, an outside dive, and fast-paced athletic action. This match is over 30 years old and holds up by today's rigorous standards, and if anything, it could be viewed as a precursor to so much of what we see going on right now. But since they've had so many matches, it might be hard for you to find the exact right one. So I will just give you this screenshot right here. Okay. Remember this specific ring pattern? Note the exact colors of the ring, the stars, and what both men are wearing. Okay? You got it? That way you'll know if you're watching the right one. And from there, if you like this kind of wrestling, I think the match will definitely speak for itself. Hulk Hogan vs. Antonio Noki, 1983 Before Hulkamania ran wild, the Hulk was running in Japan. Now, there are some who look down on Hulk Hogan and claim that he can't wrestle. But what some people don't know is that Hogan wrestled all over the world before the Hulkamania era ever started. And he did pick up a lot of technical skill from his travels. However, he felt that American audiences at the time really wouldn't be able to appreciate technical ability. That's right, America got a watered-down version of Hulk Hogan, just like it got a watered-down version of Super Mario Brothers 2. So while the Hulkster made it big with his more simplistic style, many never realized that there was a completely different Hulk waiting all along. This classic match with Antonio Noki is a snapshot in time that showcases this other Hogan quite well. Now I'm not trying to say that this match is up there with Eddie vs. Dean or anything, but I think it serves wrestling fans well to get a different look at what Hogan is capable of, especially when he has an opponent who is of similar size and is as talented as Antonio Noki. Bret Hart vs. Owen Hart, the marathon match. Now I've also mentioned this match before and I think it's definitely worth checking out. And while this is a WWF match, as far as I know, you won't find it anywhere on the WWE Network. Now before it was known as an Iron Man match, the WWF tested the waters at a house show between feuding brothers Bret and Owen Hart for the WWF Championship in what was called a marathon match. Now this was the exact same thing as an Iron Man match, in fact it also had the exact same finish as another famous Iron Man match, the main event at WrestleMania 12. Spoiler warning, this this match predates Mania 12 by almost two years, but it is clearly the guideline for that main event match. However, this time Brett is the one in the sharpshooter and he goes the distance, not giving up. The time ends on the clock and they go into overtime. Does this sound familiar to you? Now, my understanding is that this house show was never meant to air, which is why I doubt you'll find it on the WWE Network. Also, there have been many behind-the-scenes interviews praising the WrestleMania 12 main event, so the WWE probably wouldn't want you to know that the match template had already been laid out for around two years. By watching this match for yourself, even though the bootleg footage is a little rough to watch, you can see just how good things were the first time around. So there you have it, 7 matches that you may have to seek outside of the WWE Network to find, but offer some very interesting new insight to your wrestling fandom if you do. And again, there are plenty of other wrestling matches like these that I can suggest, but let me know your thoughts on these particular matches down in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, this has been Dave No.